Welcome to the Silver and Mature Womanpreneur Podcast, a podcast for and by women over 50, providing faith-building strategies for female entrepreneurs looking to achieve higher levels of productivity, capacity, and growth where we strive to focus on God's agenda while building our businesses to serve our community with excellence. Welcome to the podcast. And you're right, it did feel like we had been friends for a long time. Absolutely, absolutely. So I want to just share a little bit about you and then we'll kind of we'll kind of dive into a few questions and uh, all of that wonderful stuff. So a little bit about Mary. She is a writing coach for writers and those who want to be authors. Uh, she conducts strategy sessions for those who use writing in their processes. And what she says is, if it's about words, I coach it. <laughs> and I've been in some of your rooms, Mary, and you are true to your word. You definitely do that. So thank you for coming on the podcast. Welcome to the show. Um, we're just going to kind of dive into a few questions, unless you have something that you wanted to add before we dive into some of those questions. No, that was perfect. That was perfect. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm sure we'll hit on everything that I would like to have covered by the end of the show. Absolutely. So absolutely. All right. All right. So uh, this is pretty much a podcast, like I said, for um, for women by women over 50. And so I wanted to interview other entrepreneurs, women who are who fit in that category, who have successful businesses as an encouragement to other women who maybe maybe you're considering a business, maybe you're considering writing a book, maybe you're considering becoming an online coach, maybe you want to do courses, that type of thing. And so I'm uh, doing this series, interviewing women who are in that space, who can actually give us a lot of insight into, you know, some of the challenges that maybe that you may be facing in terms of launching your business, or maybe you're already in the business and you just want to you know, be encouraged along the way. And so that's why we are doing this podcast. And so, Mary, I want to ask you, like, the first question is, what are some of the biggest obstacles to actually writing a book? I mean, like, getting that thing done. And before you answer, let me say this, because I, I have written, like, three books, okay? And I tell you, that first book, took me probably five years. <laughs> and I don't consider myself, you know, a writer or an author, but I knew I needed something to supplement, you know, my coaching program in terms of what, you know, the direction that I wanted to go. So, you know, um, and so I wish I had known you then, you know, five or six years ago uh, when I first started, uh, you know, this project. So, what are some of the biggest obstacles to actually writing a book and getting that thing done? Oh, uh, that you know, this is a great question, and um, it's it's one of the things that I recognize, and it's part of the reason that my ministry is, is the same as my business. It's empowering mm-hmm. women to share their transformational stories to heal the world. The biggest mm-hmm. obstacle, whether we're over 50 or not, for so many women, is that they don't think their story matters. Wow. They think, I'm nothing special. I, you know, maybe um, if we just have had, like me, a fairly, you know, regular life. I had several careers. I raised my children. Um, I am a multi-creative. Like a lot of other women, I didn't really think that what I had to say would even matter to anybody, that it was important for anyone. And even though I had people around me who kept telling me, oh, you need to publish this stuff. This is good stuff. You need to publish it. 
And Mm -hmm. I remember one time, it was kind of a turning point for me. One of my mentors, I, I sent him something to read, and I said, do you think this is good? And he messaged me back. He said, Mary, how many times am I going to have to tell you? Your writing mm. is great. You are gifted, and you need to share it. Mm. And something about, I don't know if it was the tone in his voice or if it was the repetition over a number of years or if the Holy Spirit just finally um, got tired and said, okay, we're doing this. It wasn't <laughs> until my heart and my head mm. believed what he was saying. Wow. And that made wow. all the difference. So that's our biggest obstacle. We need to find people. We need to get a tribe or we need to find a coach who is going to tell us that our story matters, and then they're going to tell us why. Wow. And, that and is if so – you don't I'm sorry. Think, Go, no, go right ahead. No, 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 no. go ahead. I, I, go ahead and continue. Well, I was just going to say, and if you don't think it matters, think about <clears throat> what it took for you to be standing in the place that you're standing right now today. Wow. Now Aren't that – Thousands yeah. of women who would love to have that information. Wow. Wow. And, 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 you know, it's interesting that you say that because a lot of times, like I was on a call with a young lady uh, earlier this week. And so, <clears throat> and, and, you know, as we, con- you know, kind of got into the conversation and I was sharing some things with her that she, uh, I, I knew, I knew, but you know how sometimes you're like always in your own head and you think, well, they probably already know this, <laughs> you know? Yes. And so we assume it's... that others know what we know. Yeah. Oh, my they gosh. Don't necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. They don't. And being, and, and, I call yeah. it being seasoned, we mm-hmm. have the benefit of life experiences that younger women have not had. Yeah. And that is so true. And I remember, it seems like that was the thing that really uh, was the, I think you made, a, made that point on one of the, the, um, the clubhouse rooms that you were leading. And I was like, you know what? That is so true. And, and that's, the, that's the thing. I was like, I got to talk to her. <laughs> I got I to gotta talk to her because, you know, she's saying so many, you know, powerful things and, and uh, But, yeah, it's like we're always inside of our head, and it's just, you know, we just, it, it's because if we think about it, we're the only, we're the only ones that hear everything that we say inside of our head. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> you know? right. That's exactly right. Yeah, you know, and yeah. A lot of times, um, over a lifetime, the people in our lives, have told us, either overtly or not, that are that we're not important and that our story doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Mm-hmm. And so it's not all our fault. And yeah, that, that is, can be, yeah, you know, yeah. And that can be hard to overcome. Um, but that's that's why we we need a we need a coach or we need a, a tribe of people around us who uplift us and help us see in ourselves what the world sees. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, and that's one of the things that, you know, I talk about, um, you know, on uh, we have a, my, I have a partner, a business partner, and we actually have a community. And so we tell them, you know, all the time, and we talk about it all the time, you know, the importance of having community and being being there to support each other because we and, – and some of the ladies in the community do the same thing. And, but the thing is, it's like we, we, we're not competitors. We're there to support one another, and we're there to, you know, collaborate because no matter what, God created us all differently. We have different experiences. We have – you know, a different path. We, 
you know, a different history, you know, all of these things. And even if I do the same thing as someone else, we still have a different voice to what we, you know, to what we, how we say it, you know, how we communicate it, how we write it, you know, in this particular case, um, and all of that. And so one of the questions I wanted to ask you was, did you always know that this was your path? I mean, like, when you were younger, like, did you always find yourself, like, in the corner writing things and, and stuff like that? I'd say it was um, out, as soon as I came out of the womb, from wow. as, as soon as I could, I could start forming words and pick mm-hmm. up a pencil, I, I've always um, been a natural storyteller, a poet. Um, I, I just thought I was a little bit different than a lot of people. But mm-hmm. in, in my family, you know, there were five of us, and my mom at some point got tired of us asking her, how do you spell whatever it was? <laughs> After a while, she would just yell back, go look it up. And so we would say, how can we figure, how can we look it up if we don't know how to spell it? And she said, you'll figure it out. And she was right, we did. And we found, we learned a lot of other words on the way to the one we wanted to find. So it was a gift, but I do, I also think a lot of it's genetic because my Mm. grandmother was a newspaper woman when she was a young woman. I mean, back, you know, 100 years ago or more. Wow. So um, that, I think that's pretty mm-hmm. amazing. And I was always fascinated yeah. because I can remember visiting her, and she, as long, far back as I can remember, did crossword puzzles in ink. Mm. And wow. my dad is a tremendous storyteller. He can tell a story that lasts for hours just from memory. It's, it's amazing. And my oh, mom, wow. the <laughs> sharpest wit. And mm. um, so, yeah, I just say that it's definitely um, genetic. <laughs> I've come by it mm. honestly. Wow. So do your, your other siblings, are they writers as well, or did they went Not in a, a different direction? Okay. I have. Uh, my brother was a teacher for years. He was a mm-hmm. school superintendent for years. He's just retired. My sister's been a teacher for years. Um, one of my um, sisters became a pediatrician. She was the one that read the entire Encyclopedia Britannica from A to Z. Oh, my goodness. And oh, yeah, wow. So we're all, you know, all big readers. And then I have another sister who is, like, just super smart. And and just you can talk to her about any any subject, and and she's just super smart. So we all grew up with a love of words, and it was encouraged mm-hmm. in our family. We had conversations at the dinner table about everything, you know, about the world yeah. and about life, and um, and we were exposed to a lot of different things, and I think that made a difference for us too. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's very, very, that's very interesting. Um, so, uh, so what about you were kind of, and I know you were kind of leading in this direction about, uh, you know, our, about our, the fact that our story matters and talk a little bit more about that in terms of, you know, either, you know, why we, don't believe that our story matters, you know. I, and I know that there could be a lot of reasons why, but right. kind of, you know, say a little bit more about that. Well, and I do have a freebie for any of your listeners. Um, mm-hmm. A free ebook. They can go to the wordwizard dot club. That's the wordwizard dot club, and um, the ebook is six reasons why your story matters. Ah, awesome. We're gonna so and we're gonna that, put that in the show notes. Great. That's been really yeah. helpful for people. But the, the I'll tell you, and it's something it's kind of hard, it's sort of like the chicken and the egg. But mm-hmm. it our story matters because I believe that God gives us each a story 
that we tell yeah. with our lives. We yeah. are the history that future generations will read. And recently yeah. what, I've, what I've been sharing is that if you, whether or not you're a Christian, just think about the Bible and the stories in the Bible. Mm-hmm. When they were writing those stories, especially in the New Testament, when the gospel writers were sharing those stories, they didn't mm-hmm. sit down and, and write these letters thinking, oh, one day, 2,000 years from now, somebody's going to read what I wrote, and it's going to change their lives. They didn't mm-hmm. think that. They right. were just being obedient to a call on their lives to share the story. Mm. And we are the same way. We are just, our story is just as important as the stories of all those people. What if none of them had ever written down the story? Yeah. You know, where would we be? I mean, I, I can't even imagine what, what our world would be like, what our lives would be like. And so because we are standing in a place of triumph and victory, like it's our obligation to reach back to the woman who hasn't gotten to where we are and say, look, I made it, and this is how I did it. It's like a lifeline and a roadmap for other people. Yeah, yeah. And if if you think about it, you know, Jesus used parables, you know, which is the the Mm -hmm. same thing, you know. And uh, and so that we can connect, you know, to, um, you know, what he was saying because he, he told them in, in parables and stories so that we That's can connect, right. you know, because otherwise, you know, we, you know, wouldn't be able to connect to what he was saying, you know, and when he, you know, came to uh, in, in person and lived among us, you know, it's it's a you know a form of communication, and that's how he communicated, you know, with us, you know, that's through storytelling. Right. So, well, and here's yeah. another another thing that I share often, and my my books are titled after unnamed women in the Bible. My first one is the woman at the well, thirsting for grace. Mm-hmm. My second one is um, woman with the alabaster jar, a life poured out where I share about Mm -hmm. my journey through grief to find hope and healing. Mm -hmm. My next book that hopefully will be at least finished this year is The Woman Afflicted for 12 Years. If you notice Mm. a theme, these women did not have names that we know of. Yeah, exactly. Right. And yet, not only that, they were women, and their stories were included in the Bible at a time when women were not perceived as valuable, and yet through some divine intervention, these unnamed women's stories were in Scripture. Mm. And to me, it is a message that it does not matter what your name is or who you are or what you've done. If their story is that important, so is yours. Yeah. Yeah, and you know that is so um, wow. That is so profound because I and I totally believe that it's going to encourage someone that's listening to this call or the you know to the podcast that their story matters. You know, and and I mean, and you're right. These women didn't weren't named, but it was important enough to be recorded in scripture. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. You know, yeah. Wow. Did you always, did you, so, well, number one, what are you, I know you have books. And so definitely, you know, if someone wants to purchase any of your books and things like that, we want them to be able to do that. So we'll include that in the show notes as well, where they can buy your books. But okay, what yeah, I wanted to ask you, you on, yeah, Amazon. go ahead. Oh, okay, no, they're, they're on they're, Amazon. They're oh. on Amazon. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So, but the other question I wanted to ask is, do you feel like, I know you, I know this is a ministry for you, so I, I think I already know the answer to the question. Is this your calling? It is. Yeah. And 
Um, yeah. I didn't realize that for a long time. I I mm-hmm. didn't. I mean, because I I uniquely work with women, you know, who who don't even know how to start their story. So mm. I also, I mean, I have quite a few clients who have already published books and either need mm-hmm. help with the current one they're working on or who want to ha- um, have me help them strategize on other ways to monetize um, their books. And mm-hmm. I can help people do that too. But yeah. uh, I do feel it's a ministry um, because I know mm-hmm. my journey. Yeah. And I also believe that since I have been given this gift that I think is rather unusual, um, my my tribe has um, given me the, the name of the word wizard, and I'm asked mm-hmm. to participate in a lot of ways to help members of the tribe because I it, it just comes so naturally to me. And I feel like yeah. if, I, if that's a gift that's been given to me, then, then I'm supposed to use it. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. You know, uh, my husband is a writer. He writes scripts. And so I'm always amazed at how it just comes so naturally. You know, it's like a, a thought and it's just, you know, almost like water, <laughs> you know, that yeah. just starts to, to just kind of flow out. You know, you just sit there. But my one of the questions that I would have, and I actually asked this, uh, I had uh, an interview with another uh, author a few weeks ago about writer's block. Do you ever have writer's block? Whew. That's a good one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Yes. Wow. Um, and it happens to everyone, and, and it can really stop you in your tracks. Um, wow. I, especially like I, I've been, I'm not going to say distracted, but I have been distracted, to be honest. This last mm-hmm. book probably could have slash should have been done a year ago. Mm-hmm. But this pandemic and all of the things going on in the world um, mm-hmm. and, and changing and, you know, I'm working 100% remotely now and just everything going on. Um, I'm not sure if God put a, a, a slow down and let me teach you some lessons through this, which he did. I'm not sure <laughs> mm-hmm. if that was his original intention or if he's just working with what I'm giving him. <laughs> uh, and I will incorporate some of, uh, some of the wisdom. But um, it's so easy. What, what I tell authors, what I tell any writer who's writing anything, if they want to to be a writer, if they want to be an author, you must, it's more about the discipline of writing than it is about the words. And this mm. is a gift that one of my co- former coaches gave me several years ago. I, I had decided I was going to write this second book, and he said, okay, then we need to, fit to have you commit to a certain number of minutes every day that you're going to write. He said, I don't care if you journal during that time. I don't care if you doodle. I don't care if you write gibberish. I don't care if you tear it up and throw it away when you're done. Because Mm. the discipline is more important than the words. Because Mm. if we let, it's like any other discipline. If we um, decide, okay, I'm going to walk every day. I'm going to walk two miles every day. And then we skip it a day. Then the next mm-hmm. day it's just a little bit harder to get back into it. And after two or three days, it's like, oh heck, I'm not doing that anymore. Or I, you know, mm-hmm. or I'll do it. I'll start over next week, or whatever. And the same thing happens with our writing. Mm-hmm. So we need to pick a time during our day. We need to write it on our calendar. And may, maybe for some people it's a number of words. And that's fine, too. It doesn't matter. But that part doesn't matter. But it's the discipline. You have yeah. to be serious about it. Um, mm. And it takes, what, 60 days, 90 days for a habit to become ingrained. So mm. even after that, even now, I don't go more than one day. I, I don't do two days without writing because okay. I know it, if I miss one, I might be okay. But if I miss that second one, um it, it really gets tough to get back to it. Wow! 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 <clears throat> that's that's very powerful. So, that's um, 
Go ahead. And that didn't really answer your question about writer's block, but that it kind of did because it's okay yeah. to doodle, journal, write, write gibberish. Um, get up for a few minutes. You know, drink a glass mm-hmm. of water. Maybe your brain's thirsty. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there are a lot of, of little things like that that you can do that are not going to put you off track. Yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. That is so powerful. That is so, so powerful. I mean, and, you know, it's like you said, you know, it, it's, it's like anything, you know, even if you're on a, you know, exercise regimen, you know, you stop one day and it's like you just, kind of want to not continue, you know, and so it's kind of hard to, you know, restart, and so you kind of gain your momentum, you know, when you continue doing it, you know, on an ongoing basis, and so, uh, no, I totally get that, and, and I'm sure that when people have writer's block, because I, the, the author that I spoke to uh, in another episode, I asked her about the right when I asked her about the writer's block. She said she used to have writer's block. She said, but she she doesn't have it anymore. I think she's sixty seven, and she said she doesn't have them anymore. She's been you know writing all of her life, and like you, you know, she's gifted in that area. You know, really gifted, you know, with words and writing and things like that. And so, but she says she doesn't have writer's block anymore. And I'm sure that what you're saying, <clears throat> you know, is is applicable. And uh, in, in terms of not having writer's block, that's probably something, and I didn't ask her that, something that she also does to not have writer's block. I hope that made sense. I said a lot of words. Sure. No, it does. <laughs> I, and you're probably right. You're probably right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you say to those that, are, that believe that we're too old to start something new? Oh, boy. <laughs> that's, that's one of my favorite ones because, you know, I feel like once we get to a certain point in life, we spend our whole lives pouring into others, mm-hmm. um, doing for others, putting ourselves last. Yeah. And, you know, if nothing else, view it as a gift to yourself. It's like, okay, now that I have the freedom, why not, why not use, all of that life experience, all the, the wisdom that we've gained, and think about it, if it helps, think about it as a gift to the people yeah. who will read it. So that if yeah. you are one of those, those women who give, give, give our whole lives, think about it that way. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's really, and, you know, when I think about, because I, I honestly, I don't feel like, you know, uh, I'm 62 years old right now, and so going on 63, and so I don't feel like. Um, well, let me say it this way. Remember when I and when I was younger? I remember when I used to think, you know, people who were 62 or 50 or whatever. Now I would think like, man, they're old. <laughs> you yeah. know, it just seemed like. <laughs> Did you think the same thing? It was like, man, they're old, yeah. you know. But, you know, but and then as – because... Go ahead. Yeah. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, you're right. Now that I'm that age, <laughs> I, I comment to my husband all the time about reporters on TV and, and uh, <laughs> you know, they have some expert medical experts, and I'm like, they look like they're 12. <laughs> and <laughs> – yeah, and so, yeah, I guess I am old because everybody looks young now, but I don't feel old. I feel wise, that's what, but I don't that's feel what, old. Yeah, and that's what I was just, that's where I was leading to because, you know, and I know that, you know, there's always, you know, some new saying, you know, 50 is the new 40 or 60 is the new 30, you know, whatever, you know. Right, but right. But I, I don't know what, it's like, at 60, what does 60 feel like? Now, I realize there are some things that, you know, perhaps I couldn't do, you know, when I was 30 right. or what have you. But it's like, what, what is that supposed to feel like, you know? And, and it's, it's all, everyone has a different experience, you know? Right. Exactly. Exactly. 
Yeah, I think we get to decide what that feels like and what that looks yeah. like for ourselves. Yeah, yeah, that 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 is so true because you know, and I know some people you know that's younger, much younger than me, and you know they act you know, old, and it's like, well, I don't want to be around them because they just act old. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) You know, know, it's so funny. I I mentioned my grandmother early on. I can remember Mm -hmm. um, when we were kids, all of of my grandparents' friends were younger than them, like Mm. 20 years younger. They hung out with people who were younger than them, and they said the same thing. They're like, I don't want to hang out with a bunch of old people. (laughs) <laughs> so you know, exactly. so maybe, maybe that's why I I don't feel feel like I'm as old as I am. Well, Some and, and I do and, when I get up. Yeah. But, but well, and, and same I'm here. And, yeah. And, you know, yeah. And the things that I still want to do, I don't. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, that's that's a great point because I do too. I hang out with you know uh, uh, people who are younger than I, and, you know, in most cases, you know, they are surprised, like, I did not know you were 62 years old, you know, because I feel like hanging out with younger people, you know, it kind of helps to keep that youthfulness, you know, and that, that um, you know, that youthful attitude, you know. Right. And uh, so, yeah, and it, it's, I, it just so happens that I just, you know, pretty much hang around and hang out with, you know, ladies that are younger than me. And I, I love, you know, the vibe and I love, you know, the energy. And um, it's just, you know, really, you know, a, a good place, you know, to be when it comes to people that you surround yourself with. They're, and they're usually very mature because in most cases, you know, I'm surprised that they're as young as they are because they're so wise. And it's, it kind of makes like a good, sweet combination, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so. that has a lot to do with it. It's, it's who you choose to have in your life. Absolutely. And who you to do life with. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, before we uh, end, end the call, uh, are there any other tips you wanted to share with, you know, the listeners as far as, you know, writing, business, coaching, you know, whatever, you know, ex- experiences you'd like to share or tips or strategies or what have you? Well, one thing that I've, that I've learned from other coaches that I now help um, authors do is strategize how to – um, make money with their books, and maybe maybe you're not ready to write like your story, but mm-hmm. you um, make you know you have great skills in some area, or you make incredible products or whatever. A lot of times, writing a book, whether it's a how-to or an information, can establish you as a subject matter expert. Mm-hmm. So if you, like, make jewelry, you could write a whole book, and it doesn't have to be, you know, volumes, but just a book on how you make the jewelry and, and what the jewelry means to you. And, and Or if you have, like, kill, if you're a great cook, you could um, mm-hmm. talk about the different recipes. Um, I, I have quite a few friends who are in health and wellness field, and they have their own take on things. And so they mm-hmm. offer um, tips for people on how to, mm-hmm. you know, how to feel younger and how to be healthier. And so that gives you something to present to people to say, look, here, I've, I've written this book. I'd love to come and talk to your, um, to your group about it. Mm-hmm. So that's a great way to get your feet wet and also to establish yourself as a subject matter expert. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, Mary, uh, can you give us one more time uh, your contact information or whatever information? It it will definitely be, you know, in the show notes. But uh, what are, you know, what are ways people can connect with you and contact you, um, you know, for more information or what have you? 
sure. For that uh, that free ebook, they can go mm-hmm. to thewordwizard.club, thewordwizard.club, okay. and I am on every social media platform as the Mary Moss. So I'm really easy to find. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, Mary, it was such a pleasure and such an honor to interview you. Thank you so much for your time, your wisdom. Um, you, you're so, um, you're, you're amazing with your words and you're such a gift to those of us who enjoy your story, and you're such a blessing uh, to those of us who are, uh, you know, around you. And so I just wanted to thank you for this time, you know, that you're sharing your wisdom and your knowledge with, with us, and I so appreciate you. And I'm so excited that we connected on Clubhouse, and, uh, yeah, I just feel like, you know, we've known one another for years and years, and, and um, I'm excited that we got the opportunity to do this podcast and the opportunity to connect. So oh, thank my you. goodness. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm more than excited um, to have had the opportunity. Thank you so much. And, um, yes, I'm so happy that we've connected. And I, I know that we will stay in touch and, and um, keep, keep getting the word out there for a long time to come. Hi, this is Aldrima Harper, and thank you for listening to the podcast. I hope you got value for where you are in your entrepreneurial endeavor. And if you'd like to know more about how I can further serve you, simply go to CoachDreama.com. Again, that's CoachDreama.com. I look forward to hearing from you. Have an amazing day.